Right, what have we got here? It's a whopper box this time because it's a big boy, but it looks a bit bashed up, but this is how it comes, so uh, I'm not going to have a go at the company for that. So what we're looking at today, we're looking at the Hike Light. Now I'm going to call it Hike Light. Some people call it Hake Light, a Hake Elite, a Light, but at the end of the day, that's obviously light, and that was we'll, we'll call that Hike, so Hike Light. Um, Chinese company here, so it's a Hike Light SC01. Now I know Jimmy Mack was telling me, who's a good friend of the channel there, hi Jimmy, um, that the SC02 is a more floody version of this, this is a more throwy version, but we'll go through what throw and flood is, because I always like to do that, so you know what, what it is that you're buying. But let's mess about, let's get in the box, so what have we got here? So there's the manual, so it's the SC02, now it's a, t a 2000 lumen flashlight. So that's a, a fantastic output, so I'm going to quickly memorise this. That's it, that's it. Is that it? Two pages? Oh well, straight to the point. So you literally get two pages, so I'll give you a close up there, but I will go over these. I will blab on and tell you about it whilst I show it. Oh, I like that lockout function. They should all have a lockout function as far as I'm concerned. So we'll put that to one side and see what else you get. Now these look to me like spare o-rings, so yeah, they're rubber and they just go between two machined parts to ensure water tightness. And this is an IPX8, um, but I'm going to look at that because as you know, in my last review I was having a go at the Wuben. This is an IPX8. I'm sure this probably all is IPX8, but these flaps, I don't know, I'm, I, is that IPX8 with a wobbly flap? I'm not convinced, but I, I, I'm going to put that to the test. I'm going to put that, run that and put it in a bucket of water, but that'll be at a, at a future video. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether this has flaps all over it because it does include charging. So one thing at a time, though, there's two spare O-rings, nice to see, and they look like the 1.5 mil, the decent ones, and they feel okay. They're not, like, too brittle or anything. So a couple of, couple of uh, spare O-rings, nice to see, and a lanyard, which has all the usual stuff. Um, there's a there's a quick release. I quite I quite like these quick releases. I've been using these a bit when I've been out uh, camping and things like that. And then you have they're cheap enough. Um, and there's a swivel link, which is fair enough. And there's a spacer and a full spacer. And then one of those cheaper. To be honest, I don't actually like this lanyard. It feels. Do you know what it feels like? The it feels like the cheapest shoelace you can think of with no centre. This feels like a covering for a central core, which is missing. So I don't actually like that lanyard very much. Let's just check it. I don't think it's going to snap anytime soon, but I can't imagine that lasting very long. But you don't buy these for the lanyard. How many people do you know use lanyards? Not very many. Right, what else do you get here? So you get here. This looks like a standard um, micro USB. Yeah, that's a micro USB there. You can tell by the flat bottom the two grippers there. So yeah, okay, we'll put that to one side. I will check that. And then what are all these little... I don't know what all this is for. I presume if this is just a universal fitting that they're using, then it's used for all of them. Yeah, okay, so let's take the uh, flashlight out and get rid of this box. All right, let's see what we've got here. So it's pretty hefty, but it needs to be because it uses a large battery, which we'll go through. Very nice. So quite nicely machined, feels nice, actually that feels nice in the hand, especially for a larger flashlight. I'll tell you why I mentioned that, because if I've got it, one of my pet hates on the BLF Q8, I like this flashlight, but look, look where the finger has to go. In order f to get a grip, the fingers on the, um, the heat sink there, if you take it off, well where does your little finger go? So this is actually an intelligent design, yet you're up on this raised section which is fine but you're not on the technically the heat sink section. Um, we'll go through what heat sinks are for and what have you. Um, in fact I'll show you now just so we don't miss out. So it's that time of day, it's time for a drone. So although this is for grip here, I like the way they've gone for this design rather than the knurling because a lot of the knurling on some of these torches, um, especially like this, it's it, I can still move that, it provides limited slip protection, whereas this gives you a lot more grip, especially if you've got gloves on, I prefer that. So pretty hefty. There's a few superficial heat sinks here. Um, obviously heat sink is, um, 
you know, normally you have the uh, the flashlight there and heat's dissipated to the air, to the outside. Now, you can only dissipate so much from a given surface area and by increasing surface area, you increase the ability to get rid of heat. So how do you do that? Well, the, the quickest way is instead of having a flat surface where heat comes off, you just corrugate it to a degree like that. So if you imagine that's a piece of string and you pull it, you've increased surface area in a smaller space and you're, you're providing more, more surface available to the air. So they've put some in here. You know, they're not as... I mean, if you look at that, that's loads of heat. That's a big heat sink there. Um, they do help to a degree. They slow down um, the need for step down and things like that, but we'll go through that. Um, so the finish looks... The finish actually looks like it's got a lot of marks on it. I don't know what that's all about. What is that? Mm, it's coming off. I don't know what that is. And the button seems to have the same thing. I don't know if you can see that, but you see there's like a pattern on the button. There's a few marks on here. I don't know what all this is about. Uh, but other than that, there's the finish... But that red one I've probably just put on with the uh, pen there, so I'm certainly not going to have a go at them there. But it seems to be like a brown marking. I don't know what that is. I'll try and take that off with a bit of water. No, it's not coming off. So there's a bit of a fouled finish there on the, um, I call it paint, but they call it anodization and what have you. Um, but okay, that's not bad. Um, and there's a reflector. Now, unfortunately... I'll get as close as I can and I'll rotate this. Can you see the, the, the little dots on the reflector? It looks like the refl they've either used a cheap film or when they've done that, yeah, you can see it there, the little dots. All right, so what's happening here is obviously they've got a smooth reflector and there's your LED and the majority of the light travels out like that. And the rest bounces around and boom, boom, boom. So you get your, your throw here and your spill here. So this is more of a thrower. It has a, a deep bowl. I was going to say a deep dish there like a pizza, but it has a deep bowl. So its primary focus is to project light rather than spill it out. So it's the exact opposite of something like the, um, the mini one by Claris, which uses a TIR reflector. So on this one you're getting, this is this job is, it's flood, it wants flood, um, whereas this one is trying to get more throw. And at 2,000 uh, lumens you want throw because at higher levels up close it just obscures all detail and becomes pointless. So that makes sense for this, this size and especially this capacity. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what, that, what the beam shots are like. Um, it feels pretty good. Um, I'm quite happy with that. It uses a smooth reflector. Um, I'm not going to go through the other reflector types because it's irrelevant in this particular in, uh, review, but if you want to look at any of my other reviews, I go over what a, an orange peel reflector is, what a smooth reflector is, and what the purpose and differences of, of those are. But for a thrower, a smooth reflector and a deep one is absolutely fine. So nice to see that. It's just a shame there's a lot of problems on that reflector there, but you will not notice that. So I'm not going to mark it down for that, um, but I would mark it down based on price, but never mind. Um, and it looks like, is this removable? Yeah, you can unscrew this by the looks of it. So you can take this, that's probably metal. I'll just double check. No, I think that's aluminium as well. Okay, so it's got a two-parter there. And let's get in and have a look. Let's see what's going on here. And I'll shift that out of the way. So quite nice and smooth, a little bit of noise, which is normally a bad sign, but never mind. It, 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 it's smooth enough and it works. And once it hits the O-ring, it feels okay. Um, that feels like a decent enough. Let's have a look at this machining. A bit dirty, but it's not, it's not, uh, I think that they've put a little bit of silicon on there, but not a lot. Yeah, the half, the half, just little bits. And there's, a, there's a little bit of dirt from the factory there, but that's not the end of the world. This is quite thick. That's quite a thick tube. 
which is good though, especially the, as you get as the flashlights get larger. Let's see what's going on down here. Well, that seems okay. I just want to feel this spring. Nah, I thought that was a little cheap one, but it's not. That's a heavy duty spring. Nice to see that. PCB looks clean. I can't see any problems with that. That's absolutely fine. No dirt. Machining's fine. What about the machining on here? Yeah, well, a few bits of dirt, but that's not the end of the world. Absolutely fine. And that's super heavy duty. Very heavy duty spring. And that's not coming out. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, feels well made. So, to power this thing, you're going to have to use a large battery. Now, it's a 26650. Now, just for scale, just so you know what they look like. There's a little triple A, okay. And here's the battery for this. It's an absolute whopper. So, because of that, you're getting 4,200 milliamp hours. Now, you probably think, well, look, can I, not, can I not just have a smaller flashlight that does the same thing? Here's the S2 baton from Olight, and this only uses an 18650, so there's the difference in size. Well, the whole point is, you, yes, this, is, this, is, this gives you slightly less lumens, but you, you're probably not going to be working in turbo on this all the time. You're going to be around the 1,000 range anyway, which this will give you. So what's the point of getting this? Well, the point is... That battery is going to last a lot longer. Capacity is bigger. So whereas this is a Samsung 30Q, I think, off the top of my head, yeah. So this is going to give you about 3,000 milliamp hours. That's giving you 4,200 milliamp hours. A lot longer running. So when I think of flashlights, I want something reliable. Now, part of reliability and prepping for things is making sure you've got capacity. Um, if I'm going camping, for example... This, this is a pretty good torch to tear because it's it's giving you a throw. You can use low levels for close-up, but you've got the huge capacity of one of these Wapa batteries. So I'm using the Night Core for this review, so we'll stick that in there. It's fresh off the charger. So let's see if it fits okay. Should be okay. That feels quite positive going on there. There. Okay, right. Let's go over some more of these specs whilst I tidy up. So it's the Hikelight SC01 and it's running on a Cree, uh, I think it's the XHP35 high version and it's in cool white so you don't get the choice there so this is coming in cool white i generally go for a more neutral tint but that's a personal preference thing and i would also argue that it depends what you're doing if you're indoors it doesn't really matter i do quite a lot of outdoor stuff so i prefer a neutral tint it works better on greens and foliage and things like that so it's using the 26650 battery and it's an ipx8 now ipx8 means you can Theoretically, anyway, as long as this is tightened and you, the O-ring's fine, you can put it in two meters of water and it should function no problem. Um, there should be no water ingress, so that's absolutely great. And it's also got a memory mode, which I'm, I'm happy to see. Memory mode just means um, it remembers whatever mode you you last used, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a time-saving feature. It's not a necessity, but it does save time. And it's absolutely fine. So let's go. Let's go through some of these modes here. So functioning. You have one button now that feels quite nice now I'm, I like the fact that it's it's not flush it's slightly raised but you need to go past you need to go there's enough button travel where you have to go past flat to engage the button in other words it limits accidental knockage so you're not you're not going to knock that and what I quite like is it's got enough tactile feel, so you're not going to get button fumble. Uh, button fumble is when you kind of find the button, the button when you pull it out of your pocket. Whereas on this, I can feel, do, 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 yeah, I'm not even looking there. I can feel the button. So let's go through the mode. So on is one click and off's change. And the change mode you hold. So we'll turn that on. So we'll hold. See how it goes through the modes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boof. One, two, three. Now it's interesting to see the speed of change. So if I hold that down, see how quickly it goes through, one, two, three. That's quite a rapid succession. Whereas if I compare that to something like the Olight, so we'll turn that on. One, two, three, four, 
one. See how slow that is? Most flashlights are that speed. So it's interesting that um, Hikelight have chosen a very rapid turnover of modes. So watch. I mean, that's good and bad. If you have a lot of flashlights, you'll probably be caught unawares. But if you're used to the flashlight, that's that's a time saver as far as I'm concerned. As soon as you get used to it, I mean, come on, we're not, we're not all slow idiots. So I, I appreciate that. I think that's a good feature. So let's get this turned on and go to the lowest mode. There, so lowest mode. So we'll go through the modes. The first one, they're quite comically called low low. I don't know why, but they'll call it low low, and that's 20 lumens. And it's a low low mode just for getting basic stuff done. I would argue that that's probably enough to get a lot of stuff done. Now, you'll notice the beam pattern as well. And because this is a thrower, it's not so good for close up work. Um, there's your spot which is the direct light coming out of this uh, reflector. And there's the spill, which is the bounce. Um, so it's not so good for close-up stuff unless you hold the, the flashlight way back. Um, compare that to something with a TIR lens, which is specifically geared towards close-up stuff. Uh, if I can get it to turn on, there you go. And you can see, the, the, the as soon as I get to here, the whole thing spill. Great for close-up work. This, even on its lowest setting, not the best because look, the spot is already obscuring detail. So I personally wouldn't use this around the home, especially if I was, you know, changing a fuse or up close. It's probably you're gonna have to hold it way, 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 way back there. And that's on its low. That's on low, low setting. So bear that in mind. Okay. So just understand that this is better outdoors. Okay, get that shifted. So that's low, low. So then if we hold down and go to the next mode, it's just that standard low, and then that bumps straight up to 200 lumens. That's probably a mode that you can get most stuff done, even out in the garden or, you know, basic stuff. You're not going to get a lot of distance, but it's enough. And then the next one is 500 lumens. So bang, there's your 500 lumens. So already, look at the, look, you can see that's pretty bright. Already we're, we're, we're going way up. Um, but again, it's actually this, this gives quite a bit of spill. It's quite nice, uh, and I quite like the tint. Even though it's cool white, it's it's on the low end of the scale, more uh, neutral. And then you've got high, so that's a thousand lumens. And then you also have what what they call a hidden turbo. The reason it's hidden is because you can't instantly get to it. So if you double click, bang there, that's two thousand lumens now. So pretty light. So I'll just compare that to the Olight. There's the Olight on uh, its maximum, which is 950, I think, off the top of my head. So pretty light. Yeah, you can see, I mean, look, even the spill on that is massive. Spots are about the same, but the spill is huge. Whereas, to be fair, this is using a different lens technique, but um, you can see this outputs a lot of light and it hasn't stepped down yet. And heat wise, Bear in mind that's pumping out 2000, that's pretty damn good. That's not very hot at all. And if I was outdoors, I can't imagine that being particularly hot. I'll turn that off just for the second. There. Um, okay, you also have a hidden strobe. Now to get the hidden strobe, you hold down for three seconds. So one, two, three, boof, there's your hidden strobe. A bit of a strange UI. I, I, a lot of them will choose um, you know, double click for turbo, which you can't do on this, and then triple click, for example, for I think on the Olight it's a triple click. Yeah, triple click gets you straight to strobe. It's it's more for a tactical use, whereas having to wait three seconds for strobes a bit of a strange choice. The whole point of strobe is tactical situations to confuse an attacker, for example. So if someone's coming up on me, I can just go one, two, three, bang, you're straight at it in under a second. Whereas on this. Right, don't attack me yet, hang on. Right, now you can attack me. I think that's a strange design choice and I would I would like to see them change that in the UI if possible. Um, you know, come on, height light. Get, you know, that, that that's one thing I would change. The whole point of uh, a strobe is generally tactical. It, yes, I agree, it doesn't have to just be used for that. You can use it as a marker, but okay, never mind. So, lockout. Now, on something like the blf q8 the lockout and this is four clicks and you get those little flashes there and bang it's locked out 
on this one it's, it's a little bit more complicated you've got to turn it on press it and hold it and so to lock out you turn it on whatever mode it's in it doesn't matter so then you click click and hold in fact, I didn't do that right click click and hold there there was a little flash there so now it won't go on even if I double click or hold it doesn't matter so to, to turn it back on and I'll turn this over so I don't blind everybody is the same so you click click and hold it should if I've done it right no I'm an idiot I've got it wrong so click click and hold there back on so that was my fault there so again a bit of a strange design choice for lockout it's a little bit over complicated you try remembering that when you own multiple flashlights. It's all right for me, who's a nerd, but most people, you know, click, click and hold, but it's got to be on, and then it's got to be off to go back on. And again, something I would personally change, but I'm certainly not going to mark them down too much for that. Right, let's get down to business here. It's a very throwy flashlight, and you can't really complain and say, well, I wish it was more floody, because if you want a more floody one, stop whinging and go and get the SC02. So please make sure before you make a purchase, you're getting the right one. You know, this one, great for outdoors. The more floody one, better for indoors. But even the SC02, if that's going to go up to 2,000 lumens, um, that's kind of wasted up close. The higher the lumens, the more throw you want to use that and utilise it. But I'm very impressed. I mean... <sighs> I can see it's got a lot of great features and I haven't even shown you the uh, the charging yet so let's go over that so to charge instead of undoing this end you just undo the top so it's a tube design so that comes straight off now notice this white area so the battery's in there but notice the white area so I'm going to try the included cable that came with it so it's a micro USB and there's my trusty charger which I carry everywhere so let's get that plugged in. So any of these ports will do. Any port in a storm as this here. And then there should be. There you go, there's the charging port. Now notice how the charging port is locked away when it's securely fastened. Water can't get in. Now compare that design decision to this one where you sneeze and whoop, whoops, oh, it's IPX8, but the flimsy flaps come up no problem whatsoever. I mean, you can literally just knock that with a fingernail and it comes comes loose. I don't particularly like that sort of a design because I don't know how they can then claim IPX8. This can claim IPX8 because that charging port is out of the way. It's exactly the same design decision that Claris made on the Mini One watch. There's, there is no port which is letting water in. You've got to unfasten the whole thing and there's the port. That makes more sense to me behind a machine milled um, thread and an o-ring. That makes perfect sense to me. I don't know why these manufacturers keep insisting on putting charging ports on the outside, but okay, it's probably it's probably cheaper and less complicated. But anyway, let, without me whinging all night, let's get on with this. So let's get this plugged in and see if it works. So get that the right way up. Bang. Right, see that red light? So that red light means um, the cell in there is being juiced up. And when that's charged, this will change colour. That's it. Couldn't be simpler. So I really like that charging implementation. I just wish that a lot of these manufacturers would move away from micro USB and start going towards um, type C. But that's another issue. You know, I, I realise it's probably a cost implication, but that's pretty good. I've got no problems with this uh, flashlight. I like this implementation of charging. I like the huge cell. I really like that. I like the throwiness. Yes, I can forgive. Uh, I mean, you can see them there, the little dots. I'll forgive them for that because functionally I shouldn't complain because it won't make a difference. But I'd still be angry thinking I've bought this and it's got all these little aberrations on the lens. Okay, that's just a personal thing. So we'll put this back together. Um, there's a few little machining marks, but again, I'm, is that is that going to affect its functioning? No. Also, the button, I don't know what this stain is, which I can't get off even with water. So it's got a bit of a tarnished finish. But again, does that affect its functioning? No, it doesn't. 
Right, I need to give this a, an overall mark. Bearing in mind those little problems which don't affect its functionality and bearing in mind the price is pretty low and it's got a good output, 2,000 lumens from a, a single LED and it wasn't getting particularly hot. That's have a thing. I would give this 8. No, 7.5 and I'll say why. It would get an 8 if it didn't have this muck on, the lens, the reflector was decent, was better, and I, I would personally change the UI slightly. Um, I know Jimmy Mac really rates this uh, unit, and I can see why, and I can see myself carrying this. I would just give it, I'll give it an eight if they change those things. Um, but seven point five is a definite good uh, buy. Definitely worth the money. Um, works, feels rock solid. No moving, uh, jiggling about. Um, I'll get out and I'll show you some beam shots, but very impressed. I just, there's a few little tiny things that I would personally want changed, but that's all. So that's just me whinging. So come on, less whinging, let's get out.